I want to start with devotions this morning. And I'm actually going to read, um, a, read a, a story that Linda Churchill actually sent me this a while back and said, this is such an Emmanuel story. So I'm going to start with this story. Um, it's from a book called Weavings. Years ago at a retreat, one of the women told us a story that changed my spiritual life. I have so often told and written about this story. She had rescued an abandoned, frightened young dog who had not only been abused, but also half drowned. He desperately needed cleansing and medication for his wounds, but not until she began to lower him into the warm tub did she realize how terrified he was of water. His abusers had tried to kill him that way. He screamed and fought, his whole body a solid mass of fear. Very quickly, she, uh, realizing that there was only one way to reach him through his panic, she stripped to her underwear and got into the water with him, along with all the fleas, dirt, and blood from them both. She held him, stroking him gently, quietly talking to him, until he began slowly to relax. Then the deep cleansing could begin. I know of no better story of the Incarnation and the way God deals with our fear, our wounds, our hardened defenses. I almost feel like I don't need to say more. <laughs> but I do want to include some scripture that, what an image. We've talked about that the core of our hurt is when we're alone. And especially when we're alone in those major emotions that come out of our sin or being sinned against. And that's exactly what God does, is what she did with the dog, is he enters into our aloneness. He takes our shame, our grief. He bears it with us. He comes into the anger and is with us when we're angry. He comes into the despair, disgust, all of them, and comes right to where we are. And it doesn't turn him off, and it doesn't keep him from loving us. He loves us anyway and enters right into the midst of it. That's incredible. Corinthians says that he became poor, that we might become rich. And Philippians says that he emptied himself, taking on the very nature of being a human and becoming a servant even unto death. That's an incredible movement of God out of himself into our lives. And then the resurrection that gives us hope that there's joy on the other side, that there's life on the other side, and that we get joined to God in Christ Jesus. And that movement of God into our lives is then what frees us to move into other people's lives in the same way. That's what you've all been doing for your lives as you've come to know Christ and what this class is about. So let's take a minute and thank God for that. Lord, you are so good and kind, faithful, and loving that you bore our transgressions, that you suffered our sufferings, that you meet us in the darkest and lowest places as well as in the joys, and that you know us in both. And you, you respond to us no differently. No matter what we're going through, you love us faithfully. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There is no one more worthy of honor and love than you. And we invite you to be with us now during this class and as we go forward from here into whatever you have for us next. In the name of Jesus Christ, who lived with us and now lives and reigns with you. Amen.